Live from your public media studios, WVIA presents Keystone Edition Business, a public affairs program that goes beyond the headlines to address issues in Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. This is Keystone Edition Business. And now, moderator, Chris Jones. Welcome to Keystone Edition. I'm your host, Chris Jones. Many small businesses are struggling to survive the pandemic. As the number of cases continue to rise, digital marketing may prove more valuable than ever before. Smaller shops will need to work harder to keep up, but there are resources out there. So what can a small business do to stay afloat right now? We have experts here to help. You can reach out by phone at 1-800-326-9842, email at keystone at wvia.org, or on social with the hashtag Keystone Business. But first, WVIA's Paul Lazar takes a closer look at the effect the pandemic is having on small businesses. The COVID-19 pandemic is taking a toll on everyone, including small businesses. Many of them had to close their doors for months, reduce hours, and cut staff, all of which affected the bottom line. Some couldn't survive and closed their doors for good, leaving employees out of work. Now, as the number of virus cases is on the rise, business owners are worried that people will be reluctant to go out, which means another hit to sales. So what can small business owners do to keep money coming in when shoppers aren't? Some suggestions include leveraging social media and email to promote sales and services. Investing in contactless payment tools and e-commerce can also help. For Keystone Edition Business, I'm Paul Lazar. Thanks, Paul. If you have questions about how a small business can survive and thrive in a pandemic, we have experts here to help at 1-800-326-9842. Joining us tonight is Connor Scallett of Scallett Hospitality Group. Connor's a small business owner who's found different ways to connect without being able to open his doors. Holly Pilcavage is also joining us. She's CEO of Cole Creative and has been able to help clients with their digital marketing needs. And Frank Cauley is also joining us. Frank owns Cauley Physical Therapy and has found a way to continue helping clients throughout the pandemic. Guys, welcome. Frank, we're gonna start with you here in studio. Tell us more about Cauley Physical Therapy and how you've been dealing with the pandemic, keeping in mind that we wanna to try to educate our viewers on this idea of leveraging digital marketing. Tell us more about Cauley PT. Sure, Chris. Uh, we're a outpatient orthopedic physical therapy center with uh, five locations throughout northeastern Pennsylvania, including Luzerne and Lackawanna County. Um, so we could treat anything from head to toe uh, as far as different uh, problems. We very commonly see things such as shoulder pain, back pain, foot and ankle issues, balance and dizziness problems, um, a plethora of different things. Um, and of course, when this pandemic hit, uh, it left a lot of people squirreling and, and concerned about what are we going to do because a lot of our lifeline in our industry comes from uh, physician referrals. Um, and that's one of the basis of how we will commonly get new patients. So we had to get creative and we had to find other ways in which we can strategize to try and get new people in the door. And of course, uh, digital marketing, uh, in particular for us, through the reach of Facebook ads, uh, some SEO work, mm -hmm. uh, Google AdWords, as well as some email campaigns, uh, really was a major lifeline for us through the springtime into the summer and even now at, at some of the peak of this pandemic. Sure. We'll come back and dive a little bit deeper there. Connor, we're going to go to you. Um, you know, you own several restaurants here in Northeastern Pennsylvania. Tell us more about the Scallet Group, some of the restaurants, and ultimately, I was going to ask you how you've been dealing with the pandemic, but with today's breaking news at the state level with regard to more restrictions, I'm going to have to ask you, how are you going to deal with this moving forward? So tell us a little bit more about what you do and then um, how you're going to leverage digital to do your best to stay afloat. Absolutely, Chris. Um, so we have three restaurants here in Luzerne County, Pennsylvania, those being the Powerhouse Eatery in Whitehaven, Pennsylvania, the Oval on Bar and Grill in Hazleton, Pennsylvania, and the Canning House here in 44, Pennsylvania. Most recently, we've also launched an online business called Grocer Collective, grocercollective.com. Um, that is servicing restaurant and gourmet groceries, direct delivery to your house, typically within two to four business days that delivery comes. We've pivoted everything from all of our restaurants to go towards more digital ordering. 
also a lot of more digital menu display. So we have professional photography now of all of our menu items. Um, that's something that molds well, definitely if you're on third party delivery platforms, um, such as DoorDash, which we are on. Um, it is our belief that we just wanna try to become the authority on takeout now that that's really where the industry is going. And so we are just trying to eliminate all barriers of entry for a customer to go ahead and place a takeout order, have reoccurring takeout subscriptions. And then in addition to that, kind of filling in the gaps where grocery stores um, necessarily can't in terms of a lot more higher end gourmet foods and foods that are more healthy that might not be um, stocked in our local grocery stores. So those are kind of our two avenues that we're trying to tackle now. And as best as we can, becoming an authority in the food space in terms of inbound marketing, um, we found that to be great as well. So with so many people cooking at home, it's a phenomenal time for us to display our knowledge um, you know, online and have people be able to click and find our recipes through the internet. And uh, Holly, uh, first, congratulations on being named one of the best places to work in Northeastern Pennsylvania. So kudos to you. Tell us more about Cole Creative and maybe drop one or two uh, strategies that you've been using to help small businesses here in Northeastern Pennsylvania leverage digital marketing during the pandemic. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Chris. And here at Cole Creative, we're a creative agency located in downtown Wilkes-Barre. We specialize in a wide variety of different services, but really honing in on video, web design and development, social media, as well as strategy and consulting, as you said. Um, what we were really able to see and do and pull together in response to the pandemic was essentially all of those services into one. And what I mean by that is we would work with different uh, local, primarily small businesses and nonprofits. So this was scary for us all from the beginning of this, you know, back in March. Um, a lot of times in separate ways like we build a website we might make a video and kind of move on to the next thing we were able to put this all together uh pivot word of the year and we actually started offering virtual event marketing so i would say that's one of the biggest things that we turned to in the digital world was helping local nonprofits, especially take their in-person major events that maybe house four to five hundred people you know, that the biggest fundraising events of the year take those online, make these 30, 45 minute, 60 minute broadcasts and still help them raise, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. So that was, I would say our primary pivot. And then once everybody was able to come up and uh, you know, for a breath of fresh air, uh, once it all settled in, we started getting more calls about, uh, I'm a local business in downtown Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, whatever it might be, but I don't have an online store. So we definitely leaned a lot more into setting up e-commerce shops, even just simple landing pages to help our local businesses get online and help uh, people find them and be able to shop, whether it's picking up or uh, delivery within a certain radius. Sure, thank you. Frank, we're gonna come back to you. Um, you mentioned how social media, right? Facebook. So for folks that are watching, right, they, have, they may have a Facebook page and they could post content on there, but you said Facebook ads. So tell us a little bit more about how you leverage Facebook ads to uh, acquire new customers or maybe engage with existing customers. Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, interesting enough for physical therapy in the state of Pennsylvania, there's something known as direct access care. Mm -hmm. Direct access care means that a patient or a person suffering in pain or some sort of problem that may be relevant to physical therapy uh, can come directly to a physical therapist who possesses their direct access license. Not every physical therapist does have their direct access license. It is an additional licensing training, additional mm -hmm. education um, in order to obtain that. All of our therapists that call a physical therapy uh, strive and do achieve that so that we are able to then go directly to the general public to try and uh, obtain new patients that way. They don't have to go to the physician. We do not need a prescription or a referral by Pennsylvania law for direct access. So with that being the case, we're able to capitalize on that by running Facebook ads, paid Facebook ads. Mm -hmm. We're able to reach people in a variety of different ways. Hey, are you having a shoulder problem? Click on this ad and we may be able to assist you and help you. So by using these uh, Facebook as a platform for us through paid media ads, it has been a very strong lifeline for us in ways to help obtain potential new additional patients and uh, kind of keep our business rolling along. One of the amazing things, Frank, about Facebook ads is that you can target your prospective audience by things like their interests, their geography, uh, maybe their behavior, some demographical data. 
When you think about, because you mentioned it in your intro, Facebook ads, for folks that are watching, would you say that is a good place to start or really expand if they're looking to acquire new customers? Yeah, uh, I, I think it can work for nearly anyone, but I think the key component is working with a company and working with people who know what you are looking for, uh, know the avatar of the patient. That's what we always talk about at our offices is mm -hmm. we want this spe specific avatar. I mean, we can help kids from young, young children to older adults, you know, six years old to 90 years old. However, our avatar sits somewhere in the sweet spot of like 35 to 70 year olds. Mm -hmm. And this is what we target and utilize those different angles that you can through Facebook ads to specify to reach a certain population, which is fantastic. Great. Connor, uh, you leverage social media. Tell us more about how you think about it with regards to your business and trying to keep people informed or maybe even um, you know, putting out an incentive to try to drive them uh, into your place of business or to order takeout, for instance. Absolutely, yeah. And I also will double up kind of on the Facebook ad piece as well. Um, something that we've found immensely powerful is Facebook Pixel. So Facebook Pixel allows us to take our website visitors and retarget market to them and also similar audiences like them. So if you're a multi-brand operation like we are, I might have a customer who's coming into the canning house, scanning a QR code menu, which I have right here in front of me. Um, they visit our website, see our menu, and then that customer leaves. And of course, we know we'd love to target market that customer for our other restaurant locations. So we run Facebook pixel ads that say, hey, if this person's visited our website in the past 30 days and has visited a specific link, which our QR codes go to, we can then follow up with that customer with Facebook ads, letting them know about our other restaurants, holiday offerings, things of that nature. So from our strategic point, we always like to push people in the funnel to our website. And that way we can really control one, the message, how it's displayed. And then two, we can really take the, the customer's information once they get to our website and go to our other advertising platforms like Facebook or Google and say, hey, here are the, some of the people that are visiting our website and we want to target market very similar people to that. And we do the same thing with our gift card campaigns, which has worked really well. So people who convert and purchase a gift card online obviously want to double down and target market people who look or look more similar to them in terms of um, the avatar, if you will. So Facebook Pixel in terms of you know, return on investment for online ads has been proven for us one of the most absolute fantastic things, especially with the advent of QR. I mean, you have to remember that now most people are very familiar with using QR. So anytime that you can get someone from in-store or even if they're outside the store picking up an order to get on your channels, I think you then have a much better way of understanding your customer, controlling the message to your customer, and eventually knowing if you're gonna convert that customer um, you know, whether it be dine-in at a different brand, a takeout offer, or a holiday offering like we were talking about. Awesome. Before we, uh, in a minute or two, we're going to talk about search engine marketing, but Holly, uh, before we go there, one of the amazing things about Cole Creative is that you guys produce really high quality video. Can you talk about how to leverage video um, within the context of social media marketing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as we probably all know at this point, we have shorter and shorter attention spans at this point, as well as we're being inundated all across our social media platforms. So what you want to try to do is create captivating content, um, high quality. And I say that in the same breath as saying, uh, we are actually in a time where you could do things via Zoom or by your phone because there's a little bit of forgiveness here with everything that's going on in the world. But to be able to use video, create that captivating content, uh, something that's going to keep something somebody for a little bit more than three seconds. Just think about when you're scrolling through your own news feed, what's really capturing your, your attention for a little bit longer than a moment. The, what we call static graphics, which would just be an image, might not do the same thing as a video. So being able to sh create those short and concise videos is really important to get your messaging out there. But then once you do have a following or a little bit more of um, uh, just something that you've built up online, through, let's say through Facebook, then you can also drop those longer form videos as well. So to really tell your story and, and bring people in and draw them in closer to want to support you and, and stay a little bit more loyal. It's great. And I think we're, we're demonstrating to our, our viewers tonight that you could do little subtle things like put yourself uh, with strategic background in place. You know, Connor is at his place of business in 44 at the Canning House and uh, Holly is at her headquarters at Cole Creative in downtown Wilkes-Barre. So this is really cool. Um, Frank, we'll come back to you. Let's talk about search engine marketing, right? When you talk about search, 
people think about Google. There's two different types, organic search and paid search. Tell us more, because I know your backstory as it relates to content marketing. Tell us more about how you've thought about ranking higher on search engines for keywords relating to your business. That's another way of saying search engine optimization. Yeah, uh, as you know, Chris, uh, from, uh, from our friendship, uh, personally and business-wise, uh, I, I didn't know much about search engine optimization first coming to you, but uh, through education and through uh, learning, I found out uh, there's a big difference in what search engine optimization can do for people uh, from an organic side versus you know, a paid side, once again. So for us, um, we use that as another platform to try and obtain uh, potential clients, patients, uh, going forward, uh, and not even so much, maybe not even to just obtain the patient. We really like it for branding purposes, for purposes of sharing content. You know, really what it's all about is uh, sometimes we don't know what we don't know. Uh, you know, someone commonly, uh, biggest thing we always hear from people is, I have pain. Well, pain is not a diagnosis. Pain is a condition of something causing it, right? Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is we want to get to the root cause of the pain. We always say we want to know the cause. If you know the cause, nine out of 10 times we can come up with a solution. And by being able to use content and get your information out there through SEO mm -hmm. uh, possibilities, that has afforded us much more potential to share information, to share content, and in turn potentially engage with potential new patients that didn't even know that we could offer those services to them. And so you write how many pieces of content a week or a month for the Kali PT site? Oh yeah, um, a lot more than I ever dreamed I would. So uh, yeah, we do at least anywhere from six to 10 different uh, pieces that can range anywhere from four or 500 words up to 1,000 or 1,100 words. Mm -hmm. Just depends on the topic. It depends on, on what the, uh, the need is. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, but uh, never did I think that I would enjoy something so much. But uh, really, when you have that opportunity to share that information and then uh, therefore engage with people because now you could talk on the same level because you share that information at that level. I'm not going to talk medical mm -hmm. context. I'm, I'm just talking layman's terms about this is what's wrong with you and this is what can be done to help. And here's some information if you want to look into that before even considering coming in for, for therapy, a quality physical therapy. Sure, sure. Connor, um, <clears throat> let's talk about the idea of local SEO, right? So local businesses getting found um, on Google uh, as to, so people wanna check their hours of operation, et cetera. And particularly, because I know that people love your restaurants, the idea of local reviews. Absolutely. Yeah. So we think about Google. I mean, I really think about three things when it comes to, you know, displaying and search end results. And that is one, you know, the first thing that we like to tackle is the customer's moment of intent. So when someone's using Google, they're either a going to be searching for a restaurant they're going to go to right now, or they're going to be searching for a restaurant they're going to go to in the future, creating a plan, et cetera. So in terms of our paid marketing, we really like to capture people in that moment of intent. So that would be, I need to purchase a gift card for someone in the Northeastern Pennsylvania area. We want to display it for that. I want to go out to eat in 44 Pennsylvania. And if it's a search that with the call to action of you know, an immediate intent to either call the business, place an order, that is where we you know, overwhelmingly utilize paid search. And Google My Business has a fantastic feature called AdWords Express. So if you don't want to deep dive into Google ads, as long as you have a Google My Business page, which if you can Google your business and you show up with your phone number, you do, you can go ahead and start running ads already kind of pre-built and pre-target marketed around kind of local search engine optimization. Um, and then the second thing with the Google um, that we really like to think about is obviously inbound um, content, much like you were talking about with Frank, um, a business partner and a mentor of mine always told me it's a lot better to be taking orders than going out and getting orders. So when I think about Google in terms of, uh, you know, inbound marketing, that's one of the things that I always like to think about and give customers value. You know, you know, most of the pain points your customers are going to have making X dish or, do, you know, producing Y thing. So if you can think about those pain points and answer those questions, such as um, Frank has done for his patients, I think that's fantastic. And then third, Google will over index or overperform, especially if you use their new features. So for us, you know, Google has now the opportunity um, to go ahead and link directly to your reservation booking system through open table or directly to place an order online with a third party delivery platform. So I think as long as you can make sure that all of your information is always correct, download the Google My Business tool on your phone and constantly make sure that when they come out with a new feature or a new update, 
that your business is being highlighted in that because more times than not, they'll over index on those new features, which is very positive for you and a free benefit. Awesome. Holly, guess what? You get our first viewer question. Uh, it's an email question from Lisa in Dallas. Um, and I'm sure you get a lot of questions like this at Cole Creative. How can businesses protect themselves from fraud, especially in the digital social realm? Oh, that's a great question. I would almost want to ask Lisa exactly what type of fraud she is referring to. Um, I would say just when you're setting everything up, filling everything out uh, with the Google My Business as Connor's talking about, just making sure it's all as accurate as possible. Um, Chris, do you, do you want to maybe expand on what type of fraud she would be more directly asking about? I want to make sure I answer the question yeah, correctly. Yeah, she's not live here in the studio audience because uh, yeah. we don't have one because of right. COVID. <laughs> but I think, I think to, to her point, I think the um, people are apprehensive about the internet, right? They don't want to give their credit cards out. Um, you know, uh, there's lots of Facebook fraud, if you will, people taking on aliases. And um, I know, I can imagine at Cole, you get some apprehension. And how do you typically handle that? No, that's great. They, I appreciate that. Um, just make sure that, so let's say you are going on, just make sure it's connecting back to a real business. It, it, Right now, now there's Facebook shop place, uh, their marketplace. Um, you could do a little bit of digging to see if it's actually uh, local versus not. See if there is a direct phone number, any way that you can maybe contact customer service. Is there a real person behind it? I think those are some of my just kind of quick tips that mm -hmm. I would throw out there. Um, and if you're questioning it at all, I would just say probably stay away from it. Awesome. Connor, I know you, you want to... Uh provide some, uh, some clarity as well. I think it's a good thing for businesses to think about also when they're posting. So, you know, you want someone to immediately identify or see your post and know what brand it's speaking with. So, you know, we run three different brands and the way that those brands communicate to our customers online, the graphics those brands use, the pictures those brands use are all very unique to those brands and have a homogenous kind of social presence. So when you see one of our posts, be it the language, the color scheme, the way the shot is, you immediately associate it with you know, our brands or our food. And I think that that is something that a lot of businesses could leverage um, in terms of making their content stand out to those who follow them you know, loyally. And I think that you know, having anything that you can tie all of your pieces of content together with, an intro, a watermark, anything of that nature, it can really help um, in terms of making your content stand out and kind of help with the fraud side of things of, you know, they know it's from you if it fits in with the rest of your content. Perfect. Frank, let's chat really quickly about email, right? That's a common, fairly inexpensive way for small businesses to engage with their audience. How has Call EPT leveraged email marketing? First and foremost, the most important thing we need with email marketing, Chris, is a good list. Yeah. Um, that's probably one of the most important things in early on in my career that I neglected um, about engaging, continually engaging, not just when someone's a patient, but even after they're a patient, for a, a birthday, for a special celebration, for, for something monumentous in their life, uh, or something just uh, uh, comical, or something you want to just share. But for us, we've used email in so many different ways. But once again, going back to Connor's points um, and Holly's points, is uh, branding for one, one thing, content sharing for another thing. And, th and third, it's just basically just to maintain that engagement with the people that have been loyal to us. You know, we, we always say that we want to keep the people who know, like, and trust us. We want to keep it that way and try to uh, be there as a fallback for them, providing content, providing information, and be a resource for them. And through email, since it's relatively, you know, we use a CRM system and uh, we do pay for that. However, I mean, otherwise email is relatively very inexpensive and it's something that we certainly can take advantage of at a low rate cost and you can reach many, many people at a given point in time. Connor, if you want to deliver news about an incentive, how do you do it? Yeah, so, I mean, we do that via a couple different ways. Obviously, social media will be the biggest for us. Um, Facebook and Instagram, when we say social media, are the two platforms that we use predominantly. Um, and then to follow back on the email piece, the one thing that I think uh, could be very powerful if you're beginning an email list is also noting what that customer did when that email was captured. 
So for us, you know, we have multiple email lists, multiple points of email capture, and we kind of save those emails with the intention of knowing, okay, this person purchased a gift card last year and for the you know, last two years. So the gift card season's coming up. Why don't we mail that list you know, to speak about what promotions we're offering with gift cards, et cetera. Um, if a customer came along and asked a question about a gluten-free menu option, you know, reached out to us via email through our website, something of that nature, we would then tie that email you know, to a list of people that might be interested in more healthy eating. And so anytime that we want to communicate to those pods or audiences, you know, we can do that. And then I think the other pieces that's big that a lot of people don't utilize email for is to build target market lists on Facebook. Um, you know, you can have, if you have an e-commerce store, you already have all these customers who purchase from you. That's a great lookalike audience. That's a great jumping point to begin with. And, you know, I think you're ultimately going to see more ROI on any ad spend you have online with the more you know about what your customer looks like and just owning the authority of the space that that customer is shopping in. So Holly, not only did you get the audience question, but you also get the last question uh, before Wonder. we close today. Um, brand strategy is one of the things that Cole Creative focuses on. Can you offer us just one or two tips um, to help small businesses best put their, their brand forward in digital? Yeah, absolutely. Strategy is extremely important because otherwise, if you just start putting out content or start sending out emails or start just updating your website and not really thinking through what is the experience going to be like, you're probably going to experience a lot of failure um, and, and uh, it's probably going to make you feel set back and, and really question, you know, is this all worth it? So what I would say is just before you, you know, move forward with it, I'll focus on digital marketing. So on your Facebook page, really think about what is the message that you want to get across? What's the goal that you are trying to achieve? Are you trying to get more people to drive to your website? Are you trying to just build up a following right. and put out more engaging okay. kind of content? Are you trying to Perfect. build up you know, do the lead generation, mm -hmm. whatever it might be. Um, yeah. Pick that goal and then sit down and think through it a little bit. It's okay to plan, uh, but once you do right. start rolling things out, yeah. try to stay consistent. I, I'm speaking more directly to local small businesses. I know it could be a little bit overwhelming with everything you have to juggle, but definitely make sure that you're consistently putting yourself out there and so that people know that you are still relevant and you are still um, serving them. Thank you. I would like to thank our panelists for participating and thank you for joining us. For more information on this topic, please visit WBIA.org. And remember, you can rewatch this episode or any previous episode on demand anytime online or on the WBIA app. For Keystone Edition, I'm Chris Jones. Thank you for watching.